All right, I'm going to stop presenting and then we'll transition to um, Miriam's group. If you're ready, Miriam and uh, Mwenya, Elizabeth Mlenga, are you ready? Yeah. Yes. That, 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 talk, that took long enough. Okay, I guess it's saying that you're ready. All right, you can share <laughs> your screen and... Uh, is it or something? Oh, and uh, by the way, this thing is being recorded, so not that it matters anyway. Um, but I thought I would mention that. Um, are you able to see my screen? I can. Yes. And I know you're, you, sorry, before you start, I know there's this concern about data bundles, but uh, seeing as some of you have not met other people, do you, you suppose maybe before you start presenting, you just switch on your webcam so that people know who you are. You know, if they meet you with a mask at East Park, they'll say hello or something, right? Oh, okay. So maybe before you start presenting, switch on your. Oh. Yeah, I don't know. If, if it's a problem, it's fine, uh, but it'll be nice, right? And I, I don't think you eat up a lot of data bundles, but... And also, <coughs> if you're not presenting, maybe switch off your mic, so, and then give a chance to present, and then you switch it on when it's your turn. Great. Um, good evening, everybody. We are Group CK2, and we are giving you a short presentation on our research proposal, and the title is Open Educational Resources. Our group comes from four students, firstly being Mwenya Kayula, who presents on the definition of open educational society. Secondly, we have Miriam Kamanga, who is going to explain on the examples of four ERS, types of OER resources, classical and common examples. And thirdly, we have Elizabeth Chira, who's going to explain on OER repositories, what they are, how they're stored in OER repositories. And lastly, we have Nenga Chanda, who's going to present on the potentials of OERs in Zambia and how OERs facilitate effective teaching and learning in Zambia. <laughs> Open education resources are teaching, learning, and res research materials in any medium. These materials are freely and open for educators, students, and self-learners to use and reuse for teaching and research purposes. There are five attributes of OERs, which are reuse, return, revise, remix, redistribution. And lastly, I'll talk about the licensing. There are different types of license system, but in the recent years, Creative Commons has in education become the most popular licensing system. Mm -hmm. Creative Commons has designed a collection of licenses to ensure that there is a suitable license for sharing content under various conditions. There are four main licensing, which are attributes, no derivatives works, share alike, and non-commercials. Um, I'll talk about the examples of OER, types of OER resources, mm -hmm. and the classic and common examples. So some of the examples of OER are university courses, complete with reading, videos of lectures, homework, assignments, and lecture notes and are also interactive mini lessons and simulations about a specific topic such as math or physics and also the also textbooks that are peer reviewed and supported with auxiliary materials and another example is um, elementary school and high school lesson plans worksheets and activities that are aligned with state standards and some of the types of oer resources 
Um, these are OERs which are based on media. Uh, secondly, the OERs which are based on quality. And there are also OERs which are based on authorship. And uh, fourth, uh, the fourth type is OER based on presentation. Fifth is the OER based on licensing. And lastly, OER is based on nature format. And some of the classic and common examples of OERs, uh, these are OER common. Uh, we have MIT courseware, uh, Khan Academy, uh, Melot, OpenStack, and Academic F. Okay, I'll take it up from here. So we're looking at uh, open educational resources repositories. So to begin with, uh, OER repositories are databases developed by institutions to store ERs or, or ERs for easy retrieval. So we have uh, some examples, which is Wikimedia, Wikipedia, YouTube Education, for which is uh, for educational resources. Then OERs repositories are freely accessible and are useful for teaching, learning, and assessing as well as research purposes. So these repositories have been created to make the retrieval of OERs and the access and access the available OERs. So because OERs differ in nature, so that's the stored um, in different formats. So the second part is how the OERs are stored in the repositories. So they're stored in uh, the image format. Uh, an example of a repository which stores image is uh, the Wikimedia. So we have the video format, which is YouTube. We have the audio format, uh, the text, articles, and books, which can be found in some Google documents, repositories, and lastly, presentations. I'm going to pick up the last part that talks about the potentials of OERs in Zambia. Firstly, it's going to reduce the cost of accessing educational materials. Secondly, it will improve the quality of materials. Thirdly, it will create access to educational materials. Fourthly, it allows the adoption of materials and possibly contribute to enable learners to be active participants in educational processes. And lastly, it it will help in integrating the provisions of OERs into the educational sector within the Republic of Zambia has the potential to support the desired national educational transformation. And lastly, I'll talk about how OERs can facilitate effective teaching and learning in Zambia. The first one is that it will lead to improvement in student performance and satisfaction. Secondly, it will improve the teaching and learning practices in Zambia. Thirdly, it will provide materials that accommodate all students or context with special needs, mm -hmm. thus bringing about effective learning. Third, third, fourthly, it will enhance competencies teachers that will be able to deliver the content. And lastly, the use of OER in teaching and learning will bring in the dimension of openness and improved quality. Thank you. And this is the end of the, our presentation. If there are any questions. Uh, all right, thank you so much, uh, group C2K2. It's like uh, K2, the drug. I think you probably want to still beam up the presentation just in case people want to ask questions. But a, a bit of background about the honors students for this particular group. Uh, so they're, they're still at a stage where they haven't really carved out the specific problem that they're going to be working on. Um, I think we've only met, um, we have regular interactions, and I think we've only met on three or four occasions or something. Um, I guess only progress we've made is um, we've had thorough discussions on what sort of topic they wanted to 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 really focus on, and it turns out they, they gravitated more towards OERs. So this is just, I guess, an overview of um, of what it is they've read um, on OERs and 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 how they think this could could actually make a good enough research topic or something. So, but if you have questions, the floor is open for questions. Um, but in the meantime, I, I see the second group of honors students is, is in the house. Um, so if you can prepare um, for your presentation, once the, the, the ladies are done with uh, answering or addressing questions from the people attending the talks, then it will be a turn to present. All right, so the floor is open if people have questions on open education resources.
Okay, I was, I was expecting a question from at least Kadeo here, right? But uh, that's fine. Uh, maybe he's uh, busy thinking about his presentation. Um, Kadeo is mostly, I mean, he's really focusing on OER, but, but he's interested in, um, he's in educational technologies. Um, uh, but anyway, uh, I don't know. In case people want a bit of background here, one of the reasons why uh, I suggested um, or I included topic of OERs as an option um, on the list of topics that I shared with the students is, um, um, I mean, if you think about it, there's, there's really very little that has been done in that space in Zambia, right? Uh, you'd be amazed, I'm part of this WhatsApp group, uh, this, sorry, this uh, Facebook group, uh, that's mostly composed of teachers in Zambia, right? Thousands of them. And occasionally, right? Not occasionally, actually. Routinely, I'll see posts like, who has, uh, who has the syllabus for computer studies? Who has the syllabus for history? You know, th these are resources that should be made publicly available, right? In some, some sort of database or something that can easily be searched, right? Make it a lot easier for whoever is looking for that information to find it. Um, it gets even worse, right? So. Usually when students are revising, let's say if there's an exam, for instance, um, it's difficult for most of them to get access to past exam questions, for instance, right? So the idea behind this is, can we, can you try, try and explore this particular space even more to try and see how, um, how we can take advantage of OERs in Zambia? And, and, and I know people like, like Zola will probably say, well, this has already been done elsewhere. Like I, I know kept, uh, South Africa, for instance, uh, is miles ahead in this particular space, but but clearly here, I mean, this is still um, something we, we think can be of value in Zambia. But if there are no questions, then maybe looking at the time, 1720, um, Halwindi and, and group, are you, are you ready?